You know, despite my general distaste for Mario 64, I can admit that a few of the game's problems come from the time it was released in rather than the poor decisions or simply laziness. But this is their chance to redeem themselves. A new Nintendo system in the sixth console generation has just been launched, and their chance to fix a lot of the issues at the time is right here. Fucking god, this game sucks. It's weird too, because while I fucking hate this game, and it's quite literally my least favorite game of all time, I end up finding it overhated, and not in a way that the game really isn't that bad. I really mean in that it will baffle you what people complain about. It baffles me at least. People often try to say that the controls of Mario Sunshine are simply bad or even broken, but like, no. <laughs> the controls aren't perfect, don't get me wrong. Much like Mario 64, the side flip seems to take too long to build up, though it's a bit toned down. And yeah, control is getting better, but still not quite there. But I can't lie, the controls of this game are objectively just 10 times better than Mario 64's, mostly coming down to the lack of polish and generally slippery way he moves in that game. He also doesn't do that circular motion thing, which thank god, because as we'll see, this game still has some of those patented narrow platforms. But yeah, for the most part, this game control is really good. I do have to complain about the swimming though. It wasn't perfect in Mario 64, but they had the perfect system where timing is more effective than mashing the A button, and it worked great in making the swimming more interesting. Here however, it really is just mashing the A button and it doesn't work nearly as well for the swimming segments. But other than that, the controls are really overhated. It's ironic too, considering most of the detractors of this game's controls are probably Mario 64 fans, the game with arguably the worst controls in the entire series. I think people who like that game just see Mario Sunshine and think to themselves, these controls are different, I don't like them. I think these people should be segmented from society, but honestly I can't blame people for disliking this game because I share the fucking hatred. The mission structure for Mario 64 returns, this time having shines to coincide with this game's cool beach theme, but these fucking suck so much. Remember when I was talking about Mario 64 and mentioned that the red coin stars repeat themselves? This game is like that times a billion because if you see an original mission in this game, it's pretty much guaranteed that it'll repeat at some point in the game. And I don't see why they did that other than to be lazy because while the beach theme definitely cut down their creativity limits here, they could definitely still think of some creative concepts. And while being lazy certainly benefited the developers that didn't want to work as much, it came at the cost of this game being so... So fucking tedious. While in Mario 64 you had your red coin stars and occasional secret stars that would repeat throughout the levels, Mario Sunshine always has at least one decently fun secret level shine, a red coin shine, and this motherfucker right here, Shadow Mario. We'll get back to him later, but for now, this is so fucking repetitive. Not to mention that at least two of the shines in each level are repeated, usually with very little differences. Like this guy, Goopa Blooper. In the first shine featuring him, you have to fight him in this little area, and the second shine has you fighting him on a platform, and that's basically it. Or the secret levels. Most levels have one of these each, but the first level has two of them. Sure, both of them are different, but the concept is basically the same as far as I'm concerned. And finally, we have Shadow Mario. Fuck this guy. He appears once in each level and you have to chase him down and keep shooting water to kill him. I'll get to the water stuff later because it's basically the only one true saving grace of this game, but for now, this is really fucking annoying. He just runs off and doesn't actually attack you or anything, making it a cakewalk, but at the same time really annoying because you can barely fucking hit him. But I have yet to mention the worst part of Shadow Mario, in fact one of the worst parts of the entire game. See, Shadow Mario's appearance in every level is always on the seventh shine of the level, and to unlock the final level you have to be Shadow Mario in every single stage. Should I have to mention how fucking annoying this is? It's very obvious in the fact that it's filler first of all, but it's too much. It makes the game boring to play, which is the worst quality a game can even have. I'd much rather be infuriated when playing a game than be bored to death playing a game. And what do you know, Shadow Mario makes the game boring by the end. I wanted to rip my fucking hair out. That might be the most annoying decision of the entire game, but whatever. What was I talking about when you have to shoot water at Shadow Mario to kill him? Well, you're looking at it right now. This is the central mechanic of the game and really the only saving grace in terms of gameplay. This is Flood, a machine that Mario gets at the very start of the game, and he's really cool. He has a few modes that you can switch to on the fly, however you can only have two modes equipped at once and you can only swap at the second slot. 
you always have the squirt mode. The squirt mode allows you to shoot in any given direction. You can also spray a bunch at once by pressing A and the R trigger at the same time. It's kind of cool that the squirt mode makes use of GameCube's analog triggers, since holding the trigger down slightly will spray just a little and vice versa. However, it's not perfect, as there's a design decision that I find to be really dumb. Holding the trigger down all the way allows you to stand stationary while shooting water and aim wherever you want. That's a cool idea, but the problem is the game already does that! You can press Y to enter an over the shoulder view, and in this mode you can stand stationary and aim wherever you want. This not only makes the function of holding down R all the way to stand still completely redundant, but actually annoying too. Because sometimes when you're running around spraying water, you can unintentionally hold R all the way down and in turn stand still, and it can get pretty annoying after a while. But I still think they did pretty good here. The hover mode is probably the one you'll be using most throughout the game, since it acts as a way to correct your jumps, which is pretty essential for a 3D Mario. Mario 64 didn't have anything to correct jumps, and I think that hurt the game in the end considering how infuriating and sometimes unfair that game is. But ever since Mario Sunshine, each entry in the 3D series has had some sort of jump corrector, whether it be the spin in Mario Galaxy or Cappy and Odyssey. But considering how far the series has come, this might be the worst jump correcting tool. Not that it doesn't work or anything, it's just not satisfying to use. Mario turns really slowly while using it and it can get pretty annoying. The rocket mode blasts you into the air, but that's basically it. They did fine with this one considering there's no glaring problems with it, other than a really dumb issue outside of the power-up itself I'll get to later. But to be honest, I don't know how how you could fuck this up, so I don't even want to give him that much credit. And lastly, we have Turbo Mode, which is pretty self-explanatory, simply allowing you to move forward super fast at the cost of slow turning. This one is decent, but it suffers from the same issue as the Rocket Mode, which I guess I'll get into now. Despite me not using it as much as the Hover Mode, the Squirt Mode is definitely the most essential one in the game, as over half the shines in the game needed to be completed. The Hover Mode is using a decent amount of shines too, but the Rocket and Turbo Modes are so underutilized that I forgot they were there by the end. And it's weird too, you could come up with a ton of good ideas with these modes, but my guess as to why they're so underutilized is that they might have been added way too late into development, and they just couldn't be used that much. Who knows though, they might have been added at the start and just forgotten about. There is also one more problem with Flood I haven't mentioned, and it's really Really dumb. There's this little water tank at the bottom of the screen, and this obviously shows how much water Flood has left to use. Running out of water is a fine idea on its own, it could definitely be used for some challenge shines, but in its current state it's more of an annoyance than a game mechanic, because instead of actually having to do something to get the water back, you just go into the water and hold the R trigger. What the f- why is this thing even here in the first place? If you're going to make an entire mechanic centering around the reserve of water you have, why the hell would you make it so easy to refill your water tank? It's funny too because I could so easily see some cool ideas done with this. What if you had a shine where Flood starts off empty by default and you have to traverse an obstacle course to refill your water and then go back and like use the rocket mode to get up a wall into the shine? That's a great idea but they can't do anything fun with the water reserve, at least not that I know because I can't be bothered playing through more of this game. It sucks so much. Hey, since I've talked about about Shadow Mario, I may as well talk about the other bosses. They suck. You encounter PD Piranha first and he's really simple. He shoots slow balls of goop occasionally and you have to shoot water into his mouth and ground pound on his stomach to hit him. This one is just so boring. Let me reiterate that his only attack is the easily avoidable and uncommon balls of goop. He can't do anything else other than stand there and open his mouth to slowly ready for its attack. He's just really boring otherwise. I guess Gooper Blooper is a little better. He'll strike the ground randomly with his tentacles and you gotta pull them off to damage him. And when his tentacles are gone you have to pull his mouth to hit him back. And I question the decision of that since it's really not conveyed with much of anything other than the cork in his mouth. This boss would have been decent but he has a second phase and is really stuck to drag at that point, especially since it's not different at all. I also just really don't like the concept of this boss, it's really gross with the disembodied tentacles flailing everywhere, it's nasty. The Manta Ray is probably the best boss in this game, but he's still not great. He's a silhouette of, well, a Manta Ray and he moves around, spreading electric goop wherever he goes. You gotta shoot him with water to split him into two, and you keep doing that until it's just a bunch of little versions that chase you down. After killing all of them, you get a shine, but that's pretty much it. It's definitely the coolest concept, and it's pretty fun at the start, but when it's just the little ones, it starts to get pretty stale and boring. It's too easy. It's still definitely the best boss in the game, though, or at least my favorite. But sadly, we have to follow up with the worst boss in the game. And it is one of, if not the worst boss in the series, and that's King Moo. He sets up a slot machine and to attack him you need to land on a row of pineapples. 
Once that happens, you gotta pick up the pepper that drops and throw it at him, and after that throw any fruits available that drop at him. This would be a decent boss on its own, but I think he's hurt by the decision to base the entire fight around slots. Because it's not guaranteed you'll land on pineapples. You could theoretically be fighting this dude forever if your luck is bad enough, and an average fight will often clock in on an average of 7 minutes, which is absurd. The long runtime isn't helped at all by the fact that you need to hit these purple tiles to use the slot machine, which I don't really understand the decision to add considering the boss fight is already long enough without them. Why elongate it? So yeah, fuck this boss. But who cares because it's the final battle. It's over already? What a terrible boss. First off, 5 hits? Only 5? I mean sure, Mario 64's final battle had 3 hits and that still felt really climactic. But 5 hits doesn't seem like enough for this boss because I beat him in a minute. You have to use the rocket mode to shoot up in the sky and build up enough height to do a strong ground pound to break these little nubs on the platform. All the while Bowser Jr is shooting bullet bills at you and Bowser is breathing fire. It's a half decent idea for a boss and could definitely be refined to be a really good one. But in its current state, it's just too easy and the game ends in an anticlimactic way once again. How have we had 9 games so far and only one of them has had a climactic ending? But yeah, how is this one of the least climactic endings in the series just above Mario Land? The final level sucks in general, honestly. It starts fine, but as soon as it gets to the boat, it drops off a fucking cliff. The boat is really janky to control, it requires you to use your squirm over to move it, but the physics generally just don't work very well and don't function how they should, and it doesn't help that hitting anything sinks it. And after that, there's just this sort of boring cloud platforming section that doesn't last too long. And after that, we have the boss, which I guess we've already talked about, but it's a super disappointing end to the game despite me not expecting much to begin with. Hey, I guess since we're here, we might as well talk about the level design in general. It also isn't that great. If I had to pinpoint any favorites from the level selection, it'd probably be Pianca Hills and Pianta Village. I especially like Pianta Village. The level often takes place at night and it looks really nice there. But outside those two examples, the level designs are really just sort of boring or annoying. Like Rico Harbor, for example. Visually, it looks nice for sure, but the level design is a total mess of scattered platforms and narrow walkways. It's a complete nightmare of a level. And then there's levels like Gelato Beach, which are just sort of forgettable considering there's nothing of value of them. Like this level is dry as fuck and it's the same situation with Serena Beach. But my main critique with Mario Sunshine, and actually the biggest critique I've had for any game in this retrospective so far and even in the future, is that it's tedious as fuck. I've already mentioned the Shadow Mario stuff, but the game as a whole is just filled with little annoyances that make the game infuriating to play, like shine requirements as a whole. As usual, shines are required to unlock new levels and sometimes trigger events on the hub world. But unlike Mario 64 where star requirements only got a little too demanding near the middle and end, shine requirements are pretty demanding the whole way through, and you'll often have to complete almost every shine in any given level to progress in the game. And outside of that, there's just individual instances of things making the game tedious, I can mention. Like in Shine 3 of Pianta Village, the Goopy Inferno. It's a really infamous shine and for good reason because this shine is genuinely terrible. You have to hang off of ceilings or do some tight platforming for the most of it and if you slip up even once you're dead and back to the start. A shine like this could have worked really well, I especially love the idea of going under the main area to find another way, it's a visually pleasing shine, but as for the challenge itself, it might be one of the worst in the series. And then there's this one in Pinna Park, which is arguably even worse. You have to platform up these really cramped girders and if you slip up a little bit, which is very easy to do, you're falling all the way back down and you gotta try again. I know I'm over explaining this a ton, but this is really how it described the game as a whole an adventure with loads of minor annoyances. A lot of shines in general are just conveyed horribly or not conveyed at all, like this Serena Beach one where it feels like they wanted to do a maze due to the fact that I literally had to search up how to do it. But I think you get the point by now. But I am here to defend one particular aspect of the game. Blue coins. Mario enthusiast, dude, what the fuck did you do to the door? The door's super annoying to open anyway. Yeah, I guess it right. Dude, why are you in here? I'm recording. What do you want? You're talking about blue coins. I want to explain to this dumbass audience why they suck. Don't insult my audience, dude. I appreciate- Shut up and let me explain. Jesus. These things are scattered all across the levels, and unlike previous games, they are different currencies to the regular coin. There's 240 of these blue coins, meaning that there's 24 shines you can get by using them. That sounds like a lot, and it definitely is. But the main thing people like to complain about is that collecting each individual one to 100% is tedious. And yet, it is also tedious, so what's the point in defending them, Wario enthusiast? I'm gonna tell you why, you little cunt, because it's a bit of a fucking shocker, so sit down, I'm about to rant. 
Why am I defending them? Because you don't have to 100% the game. People try to act like this is an aspect of the game that makes it worse. When the power off button is right there. It's fucking scary how dumb these people are. Because for the 22 fucking years this game has been out. People have been complaining about how these things are annoying to collect. And it pisses me off that I agree with their same Because of how dumb, finally stupid of a thing it is to complain about. People try to act like this is the end of the fucking world. And the only thing this game has to complain about. When it's completely fucking optional. This is the thing you guys complain about? What about the 57 fucking times you fell? down and had to climb back up again for the stupidest dumbass reason you don't have to collect all the blue coins and if anything it's a better thing that this feature is here because you can get more shines to progress through the game faster i don't get me wrong these are not fun to collect but if you're going out of your way to get these things i think it says a lot about how you view games that is that you view games badly okay jeez dude i'll get it. i'll leave chill go back to playing wario world 3 or whatever it was called it's wario land 3 you fucking ass i think it says a lot about the game itself that i believe the best aspect is the presentation it's still a little primitive in some aspects such as the compressed fmv cutscenes but other than that the game's graphics are pretty top notch this game runs with the beach theme basically the whole way through and it almost never feels out of place and they really do make a lot of the levels feel lived in such as other parts of Al Delfino being visible from certain levels though there are some really obvious lazy level asset reuses in some sections like the secret levels or most obviously in the blooper racing course but it still looks really nice all the way through I especially love the look of the water it was pretty essential that they got it right and they certainly did the soundtrack is also amazing but it's getting pretty redundant to say that honestly still I think everyone loves songs like Bianca Hills Delfino Plaza and of course the casino theme unrelated but the camera is also way better too. While it's still getting there, it's way, way better than the camera of Mario 64 and improves the experience quite a bit, though not enough for me to not deem it my least favorite game of all time. Yeah, I really hate this game that much. To be fair, that bar is pretty low. I don't genuinely dislike a lot of games, but Mario Sunshine is definitely my least favorite game ever and I think it deserves to be forgotten. You know, when I started doing this, I genuinely thought it would be fun, but the games are really starting to go downhill because this is going at the very bottom of the list. But what shocks me is that I can 100% agree that this game is nowhere near as good as Mario 64 and I hated that game too. I would be genuinely shocked if any game beyond this point surpasses Sunshine in terms of being a shit game. With genuinely boring game design and flawed concepts, I have no reason to ever play this game ever again, and I did not have as much to say about it as I thought. Let's just hope this is a small bump in the smooth road, because this and the last one were pretty damn bad. Oh yeah, what is the next game anyway? Oh hell yeah, the first game I ever played. And this is also one of my favorite games ever, so I have no reason to assume that Mario 64 and Sunshine were anything more than slight missteps but I guess I won't assume anything yet. So, was the return to form for the series successful? Well, I guess we gotta find out.